So today we're going to take a look at one of the wells that uh, the industry has been been keeping an eye on, uh, one of the wells to watch for 2023. Uh, it's uh, the BP Ephesus well over on uh, the east coast of Canada. Now, some have said that uh, it might be BP's last wildcat. Now, I find that hard to believe. In fact, if anything, perhaps there should be more wildcats being drilled by BP. Uh, after all, £7 million pounds seven billion pounds profit in the first quarter of 2023 not bad um a billion return to shareholders pensioners don't seem to be too happy though anyway um let's uh let's take a look at this well i hope you enjoy the video and uh, i'll see you at the end today we're going to talk about ephesus what exactly went wrong now we're not talking about this ephesus which is in western turkey we're talking about this one, the well drilled in the Western Atlantic offshore Canada by BP. In fact, this is the Ephesus F94 well in the West Orphan Basin. Now, it sputtered back in May and was drilled with uh, the Stena Ice Max drill ship. It's about 400 kilometres offshore uh, St. John's in Newfoundland. We understand no commercial hydrocarbons were found. Now, if we home in and look at this area, here you can see are the uh, some of the, the major oil and gas fields uh, offshore Newfoundland, Hibernia, White Rose, Bay Nord, and uh, also these uh, green dots here, they're uh, some recent discoveries. Today we're going to be talking about uh, this, this well here up in the uh, north, the West Orphan Basin, and this is where Ephesus was drilled. So we'll remind everybody that uh, if you uh, become a subscriber to the Trove database, you get information like uh, here's the uh, Kappa Hyden uh, well, and here's all the information that we have on that well, all at the click of a button. And we have this for every field and every discovery worldwide. So here's a news article that came out just after the well reached total depth and uh, it said signs are that uh, the well was unsuccessful. Well, I think we've had confirmation now that this was a uh, dry hole. Here's the uh, the Stena Ice Max, that's the, uh, the drill ship that actually drilled it. If you haven't seen it, uh, there's a link to uh, our uh, short where we, uh, we discuss the Stena Ice Max. And in fact, it's part of a longer discussion about uh, mobile drilling rigs. So why is Ephesus in the news? Well, mainly because it was just on everybody's top 10 wells to watch list for 2023. And here's an example here on the right, uh, this coming from oil price. Considered to be a possible frontier opener. So a very, very material and important well, um, if it were a success, could open up a, a very, very large new area. It was regularly compared to, to Marlin, the, uh, the big oil field in Brazil with uh, over eight billion barrels of oil in place. Now we'll take a look at Marlin, the analog. It's an interesting seismic anomaly that we see at Ephesus and its quoted potential size was of the order of five billion barrels. It caught people's eye and um, we've had multiple requests for a video for over the past year and uh, we've eventually got around to doing it. So there's the, the grouping. It was uh, BP as operator, Hess 25%. Now uh, it was Noble who farmed in on this but uh, then subsequently Chevron uh, took Noble's interest in this license. So let's have a look at the geology. The uh, The target was an Eocene turbidite. It was some kind of channel lobe complex, a stratigraphic trap. And uh, we can see it down here. It's, uh, it's this anomaly here on this region. And it's uh, of the order of up to 46 kilometers wide and 18 kilometers long. So had this come in, it would have been huge. In water depths of uh, 1,450 meters, and at around about a, a depth of uh, 4,700 meters, quite deep for a relatively young section. Now the uh, the anomaly here is described as a class two, class two p AVO anomaly. So that's amplitude versus offset anomaly. So when we get this brightening here, sometimes it can be due to lithology. Sometimes it can be down to the fact that we actually have hydrocarbon actually within porous sandstones or limestones but in this case here it was known as the the cape friels prospect um it became then known as uh, ephesus and that's what the well was drilled as and you can see a very very bright here um, but also we see lots of other brightenings and lots of other anomalous uh, amplitudes in and around this event likewise we actually see this greens pond lead now it does look very much like the greens pond is is actually up dip 
of Cape Friels. And we'll come back and have a discussion and a think about what this means of uh, for Greens Pond lead, how you can actually charge something in this uh, Ephesus prospect, kind of without charging something up in this Greens Pond area. This being up dip, wouldn't it be uh, as likely that uh, anything, if there was hydrocarbons here, they would actually spill and be up here. This perhaps should be the, the brighter uh, and more convincing anomaly. We'll come back to that. Here's an image that we've got for uh, Ephesus. Now, not terribly clear, not orientated, but uh, it's looking like uh, we've got some kind of a, a feeder event uh, up here coming down a, a slope. And then perhaps this here is is the ponding that was the uh, the target. Now, not too clear and there's uh, insufficient information out in the public domain, but this is perhaps the, the play that Ephesus was, uh, was being tested for. So let's have a look at the seismic. Now, um, if we look here, and this is uh, from uh, the, the, the excellent GeoExpro uh, magazine, and here we have a look at the, uh, the near offsets, and what we can see, no particular sign of, of any seismic anomaly. When we look at the FARs, then all of a sudden, Ephesus jumps out, and we see this event here. There has been some discussion, I understand, within the group that perhaps there was an indication of a of a flat spot but um, perhaps uh, that wasn't terribly convincing and if anything it looks like too much weighting um, was placed uh, on the uh, on the AVO uh, for this feature here that looks like there's some kind of disturbance here underneath Ephesus I think this has been postulated as being potentially some kind of overpressure bursting through also uh, it could be some kind of um, you know volcanic gases or something so potentially there could have been a risk of, uh, of sort of carbon dioxide or, or other inert gases uh, actually causing this uh, this event here because gas in itself will, will cause the um, the AVO it doesn't discriminate between the composition of the gas so here we do see this is what uh, was being targeted with the well now one of the great things for us is that uh, we can very very quickly delve into our Trove worldwide database and and these are just some of the locations of the opportunities that we have uh, within a Trove database and we can actually uh, look uh, we we did look straight at the uh, the Brazil database and we looked at Marlem and here's the uh, here's the information that we have in the tab that covers the Marlin field, lots and lots of information about that particular field. So we looked and we compared the two. Now, if you want any more information on Trove databases, get in touch. Here's a comparison. This is Marlin, and in some some respects, we see this uh, this amplitude. Now, we don't know much of the detail of the uh, the geophysics here, that what the seismic is. We don't know polarity. Um, we don't we don't have very much information so we can't do a full analysis of it but what you can see when we map this anomaly over the marlin field uh, there does appear to be this this feeder channel here and there is this uh, this anomaly uh, in this region over here so that's what uh, that's what marlin looks like now it's a sort of type 3 it's a, an unconfined sandwich lobe and uh, if we then compare that with the what we understand to be the model for Ephesus, and we compare it with the the far offset data, there are some uh, there are some similarities for sure. Now I don't understand what this discontinuity is here. Um, is it some kind of a fault? It certainly doesn't seem to impact this underlying event down here, but there seems to be quite an offset and a much brighter event here. Don't know whether this is a a fault block that's not in communication, whether this is gas, or quite what's going on, maybe a facies change. But uh, again, you see that there is potentially, uh, uh, is this a flat spot here? Looks to be at or about the sort of the spill point as we go back up into the Marlin salt field, which is um, located at this uh, at this point here. Now compare that with, with, with Ephesus and and perhaps go back to the regional line and have a look and see that, you know, we do actually see uh, again, a, a spill point, uh, and then it goes up to the Greens Pond lead. At this point, I'd like to thank uh, Henry for uh, some very useful input in uh, understanding what the uh, what the challenges might be at Ephesus. So, what do we know about the cost? 
Well, we don't know the uh, the cost of uh, drilling the well, but uh, I can imagine that will be somewhere in the region of 100 to $200 million. And also, the joint venture secured the block back in 2016 in the licensing round with a commitment of a uh, $214.5 million work commitment. And that was the, the highest in that particular round. So, so this was a block of high interest. While we're in the area, we look forward to seeing how ExxonMobil get on in their uh, Gale N66 exploration well. Now it has spudded. Uh, results are expected uh, around about sort of September, November 2023. It's been drilling with the, the Hercules, which we featured on our uh, Namibia rigs video. Drilling up on the northern edge of the Jean d'Arc Basin. It's uh, sort of ExxonMobil's uh, third frontier exploration well in the in the region. We we the Hamden well drilled back in 2022. It drilled a uh, Cretaceous sandstone prospect. In sort of deep water, you know, 1,175 meters, um, but that was a dry hole. The uh, companies uh, involved in the drilling of Gale, well, we have ExxonMobil, 50% operator. Qatar Energy, well, they farmed in earlier this year, and uh, I think Cenovus Energy, uh, they've been in, I think, uh, from the start. And finally, a big shout out to uh, my very good friend, John Chapman, who's uh, Happy special birthday today. I'm not going to tell you, tell you his age, but uh, suffice to say that in Scotland, he now has uh, access to free public transport. All the best, John. Take care. Thanks for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We need, uh, we need as much support as we can get. And uh, please ring the bell. That way you'll be informed next time we bring a video out and you can watch it and get the news before all your colleagues do and uh, chat about it at the coffee machine. Thanks for watching the channel. Look forward to having you back before too long. Bye for now.